The Bible says you'll be tested by the praises you receive. It's in the Bible. It says you will be tested by the praises you receive. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say here is a glutton and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners but wisdom is proved right by her deeds once the praise starts coming it starts getting into your head and before you know it you want more of it and so now your motivation for doing whatever good you're doing it's not because you want to please the Father in heaven. It's because you want to please yourself. You please them to please yourself. It's all selfish. It becomes a very selfish motive. And that destroys everything that God is trying to do in your life. So when God tells you to be kind to somebody, he's not telling you to be kind so you can collect praises. He's telling you to be kind so that he will get glory. So that you can touch their hearts and then you can lead them to Christ. So they can also be set free. The main purpose for everything God is telling us to do is to lead people to him at the end of the day. Is to lead people to him. And so if we forget this assignment and we start enjoying the praises and it gets into our heads. That's when we struggle. That's where the enemy wins. So we need to be very, very careful that we don't fall into these temptations. If there's too much headache it brings, it brings so much headache. I'm telling you, if you try to be a people pleaser, huh, it's, such, it's the hardest thing to sustain. And everybody that's living that kind of life, they know what I'm talking about. They know how much they are hurting deep down. They know it. My dear, God wants to break you free. Jesus is calling. He wants to break you free. He wants you to have freedom of mind. He wants you to have a sober mind. He doesn't want you to think of the next thing to do to maintain the status you've created for yourself. The status he did not give you, that you created for yourself, that you're trying to maintain so that people will continuously see you as this person and you are struggling every day trying to maintain this. My dear, a source of a thing, it's its sustenance. If you lifted yourself up, you would have to sustain yourself up. And you and I know it's not easy. It's not easy to do that. So free yourself. Jesus wants to give you a break. He wants to free you from that burden. Do you understand? And so if you're listening to me and you've gotten yourself into this trap and you've been pleasing You've been living your life to please people. And you are tired. You feel like really like now you want, you want out. I'm going to pray with you. And also for those of you who have not received the Lord Jesus yet as your Lord and Savior, Jesus is calling. You have to want the kingdom of God to have it. The days where people were pampered into it is over. Now, if you don't want it, nobody's going to force you. And so Christ is calling. You hear the word. Don't waste time. Now is your time. Nobody is coming to pick you up to go to church. Nobody is going to knock on your door and come and sit down with you and share the word with you. Those days are coming to an end very quickly. If you haven't noticed yet, the days where people knock on doors, and have so much time on their hands to come and sit there with you, teach you over and over. And you still kick them out of your house. You don't even want to have anything to do with. You hear that they are coming and you run away. Those days are coming to an end quickly. So if you hear the word, move. Move. Because the days are coming. The days are coming. The days are coming to an end. And so if you're listening to me and you are ready, you've heard enough and now you want to receive the Lord Jesus, 
I'm going to pray with you first and then I'll pray for you, the one that is struggling with being a pleaser. That the Lord will give you the strength that you need to make that step. To make that step to say no more. Because it will begin with you. You would have to come to the place where you are ready to not be a pleaser no more. It takes your own willingness to be able to break out of it. And then the Holy Spirit helps you, holds your hand, so that every time that challenge comes your way, he helps you to be able to overcome. And so let's pray. We're going to pray for those of you who wants to receive the Lord right now. Let us pray. If you're excited and you receive, you want to receive the Lord Jesus and you want to have the Holy Spirit with you, please pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I thank you for my life. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you came and you died for me. And I believe that you have risen and you are up in heaven, seated at the right hand side of God. Lord Jesus, I pray that you come and be Lord and Savior of my life. I surrender my life to you today. And I ask that you please give me your Holy Spirit. And whatever he tells me to do, Lord, I will do it. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have answered my prayers. Amen. I'm excited for you if you prayed this prayer with me today. I encourage you to find any Bible-believing church, join them, and go be a part of what God is doing in their lives. And when you go there, tell them you want to be baptized. You want to have a water baptism. It's an obedience thing, you know. If Jesus allowed himself to be baptized by water, who are we not to do it, right? Go and get it done. And I'm sure your life will never be the same. Now, for those of you struggling with pleasing, being people pleasers, I'm going to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all those who are listening to me that are struggling with this problem of pleasing, being pleasers, to the point where, Father, we will sin against you just to please one another. Oh, Lord God Almighty, I pray in the name of Jesus that anything that is causing them to become like this, anything that is a bondage, any chain be broken off of them right now in the name of Jesus, that they will receive the strength and the confidence, the boldness they need to say no when they need to say no, the boldness to say yes when they need to say yes, the boldness to walk away when they need to walk away in the name of Jesus Christ from today. Father, I pray that they are set free. Thank you, Holy Father, that you have done it so. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Now, if you, you are one of those that have been struggling with this, I encourage you to get into the Word. Get into the Word. The Bible says that if we remain in Him, as long as we remain in the vine, we will produce. We will bear fruit. When you do not remain in the vine, you will not produce fruit. Now, a lot of people struggle with why we must learn the word and meditate on it. The thing is, we are not saying that as long as you're learning the word and you're meditating, you, have, you are done. You have arrived. No. But the fact is, you are a human being. You live in an earthen vessel. This brain of yours, you will keep on forgetting. Whatever I tell you today, I guarantee you in the next three months, you will not remember. Whatever I'm saying today, if you don't keep on watching this video and you, you know, after this, you walk away, even one month from today, you will not remember what I said. And that is the fact because you live in an earthen vessel and that's what happens. And so God, knowing how he created us, said, you must meditate on the word day and night so that it will come to memory so that when it's time for you to produce, you can remember. You cannot do what you cannot remember. You cannot, you cannot practice what you don't remember. That's why we study the word as children of God. The more you study, the more you are aware, the more you become alert. Do you understand? So if somebody came to you and said something to you, because you have already been meditating on how to respond to such um, utterances, you will know exactly what to do, what to say to them. But if you've not been meditating, you've not been studying the word, you will forget. You're going to react. 
And that is why we must meditate. So if you're a child of God and you don't like studying the word of God, you cannot grow. There's no two ways about it. You will never grow as long as you're not studying. If you're going to be a good child of God, the one that bears fruit all the time, when trouble comes to you, you know what to do. You are going to have to study. So now that I have prayed for you, every yoke has been broken off of you. Every chain has been broken off of you. Now it's up to you to now study. Fill yourself up with the word. Get your Bible, read it, study it. Ask the Holy Spirit for understanding, for clarity. Memorize it, bring it to memory consistently. And look for opportunities where you can practice the, this word that you're reading. When you need to say no to something, remember you're supposed to be honest as a child of God. And so you are going to say no. When somebody is telling you to do something that's against the word of God, you will remember that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said no to the king. They did not bow. They did not bow to the king. They were thrown in the fire, but they did not bow. The fire did not hurt them. And so you remember these things and you're not going to give in to these evil manipulations. So this is why I'm telling you, you have to study the word. It is the word that will clean your mind. It is the word that you are going to practice. So you cannot practice what you don't know. So study the word. The word of God is your food. Is that which your spirit eats? Your, your spirit does not eat um, fried rice and chicken. Your spirit doesn't know what pizza tastes like. Your spirit eats the word of God. If you refuse to feed your spirit with the word of God, it will starve. It will become lanky. It will, it will die. You will die spiritually. A lot of people are walking around. They think they are alive. They are dead spiritually. And then for every little thing, you'll be looking for somebody to pray for you. For every little thing. You'll be looking for people, pray for me, pray for me. Every day you are looking, walking around looking for somebody. You hear a prayer uh, conference somewhere, you are rushing there. But still, your problem remains. Nothing has changed for you. Read the word. Study the word of God. That's where you will grow. And make it a point that as you are studying, you are practicing it. So that that word which you are feeding your spirit with will become flesh. And it will come out that all will see. And that's how you be set free permanently. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you were blessed by today's message. Please don't forget to like and share the video with someone so they can also be blessed by it. And until I come your way next time, remember it's Bible before dawn.